Hi YouTube, um, this is the second part of my video showing uh, the drawers of my entomological cabinet. Um, so make sure you check out the first video if you haven't seen it already. Um, let's start with this one though. <laughs> okay, so these are mainly uh, ex-pets. Uh, I mean I keep a lot of stick insects and leaf insects and that sort of thing and breed them. Um, so I'll just show you, these are um, giant catadids is basically like a, a big grasshopper or bush cricket type thing um, that looks like a leaf. Um, this is a giant walking stick, stick insect. This is a jungle nymph, stick insect, which is the heaviest insect in the world. That's the female, uh, this is the male. Then you've got these are um, giant spiny stick insects. Um, and you can see on the legs here, these big thorns, they use those as a defence. So if you try and pick them up too roughly and they don't like it, they will grab you with their back legs and try and push those thorns into you, um, which can really hurt and draw blood. So these are probably the most dangerous stick insects you'll ever keep. Um, but actually they're quite gentle as long as you're gentle with them. This is a giant Malaysian leaf insect just amazing like the camouflage on this then you've got giant centipede that's a uh, scolopendra species um, they are quite scary to keep in captivity and their bites are supposed to feel a bit like putting your hand in fire so when i keep these in captivity i'm always a bit wary of them some more stick insects there can't remember what that species is these are mossy stick insects, they're quite an unusual one. Um, these are called Mount Apus, Apo stick insects, sorry. And this is um, the female. This is the male. They're kind of waxy looking. Uh, then we've got, this is another spiny stick insect, not as big as the other species that I showed you. Uh, and then this is the Australian giant prickly stick insect. Again, the bigger one is the female and the smaller winged male and they can fly around quite a lot if you get them out um, next draw these are um, tarantula skins okay so they look like whole tarantulas and actually the first time i ever kept a tarantula when it shed its skin and then i looked in the cage and it just looked like there were two tarantulas in there it did freak me out a little bit um, but yeah these are just hollow completely hollow inside you can see where they sort of pull their legs out through the holes um, but also what's quite interesting about these is if you look see these tiny ones that's like one molt that's the next molt that's the next molt the next molt the next molt and this is all the way from that tiny little baby through to this one uh, no this one because this is a different species. This is a salmon pink. Um, this is a goliath bird eating tarantula which turned out to be a male which was a shame because males are smaller. This is another species. Indian ornamental, that's another species that I used to keep. And at one point I had 60 different um, tarantulas so I've kept quite a few species. This is a red knee, again like a few stages through the growing process uh, and this is a curly hair tarantula again each kind of stage to adulthood um, these things are called um, tarantula hawk wasps um, and in the wild they actually hunt tarantulas and you can see the tarantulas are a lot bigger than they are um, but what they do is they sting the tarantula and that paralyzes it and then they'll drag the tarantula um, to a nest and then they lay eggs on it just the nest is normally just a sort of hole in the ground they lay eggs on it and the eggs hatch out and the little tiny grubs eat the tarantula while it's paralyzed while it's still alive they eat it alive basically nasty uh, and apparently their stings are really painful like on the um they're on the schmidt pain index so pretty painful Okay, this is another drawer, um, some of which are ex-pets. So these giant atlas moths, these are the biggest moths in the world. Um, those I hatched out of these cocoons. Um, you can see the chrysalis there goes inside this cocoon that's made out of leaves. 
and then they hatch out, which is pretty cool. Uh, some shield bugs, more cockroaches, this uh, sort of giant uh, locust thing with its wings out. Here's another one, another grasshopper, various uh, wasps and things. Then we've got some mantises, some scorpions, all of these whip scorpions and scorpions and um, sulfugids, which are camel spiders. These were all ex-pets. And these things at the end here are called vinegar runes. I kept those as well. Um, that's a big ant lion. Uh, some pill millipedes. And some lantern bugs. Uh, and those are cicadas there. Okay, and we've got this. Quite a few of these are just native species of moths. They're a lot smaller. Um, although some of these are hawk moths, which are our biggest uh, native moths. So you've got poplar hawk moth here. Um, and then we've got, that's the caterpillar. And then we've got lime hawk moth with the caterpillar. Eyed hawk moth with a caterpillar. Um, I was lucky enough to buy a load of freeze dried caterpillars from a, a guy at a show once because um, normally the caterpillars go all mushy when you try and uh, preserve them. But if you freeze dry them, they look just like they do when they're still alive. So that's a um, privet hawk moth with its caterpillar. That is uh, an elephant hawk moth with a caterpillar, and this is a small elephant hawk moth. Then you've got pine hawk moth. Didn't get a caterpillar for that one yet. Hummingbird hawk moth. This one just looks like a little hummingbird when it's flying next to a flower. Uh, then you've got broad bordered and narrow bordered bee hawk moths. Convolvulus hawk moth with its caterpillar. And these ones, I can never remember. One of them's called uh, bed straw hawk moth. Uh, and then you've got striped hawk moth, silver striped hawk moth. With some caterpillars to go with them there uh, and then this is the death's head hawk moth um, the one that, with the little skull on the thorax there from um, silence of the lambs remember uh, and then you've got a chrysalis and a um, caterpillar from that uh, there, there are some other um, moths in here as well like uh, puss moths and lobster moth which has a really unusual um, caterpillar that can kind of spray formic acid at you. Uh, these are emperor moths and I think that's fox moth. Uh, right then we've got like a hornet, that's a queen hornet there, uh, and various kind of wasps and um, parasitic wasps here. Uh, horntail, I had lots of horntails like this flying around um, when I was building a cabin recently um, and they're massive when they fly around they make quite a, a loud buzzing noise and I was able to catch one for my um, cabinet and this massive horsefly as well you can't really tell how big that is but it's a huge species of horsefly I wouldn't want to get bitten by it then we've got lots of bees Lots of different flies. It takes me a long time to kind of identify all these and put the little labels on them. Um, more flies. Things like um, got these like mantis flies and yeah, all, all kinds of interesting things. Uh, not mantis flies, sorry, snake flies. They're called these ones. Um, a few butterflies. Um, the swallowtail was collected in France. Uh, most of these I've had for years and years and years. Um, earwigs, yeah, quite a lot I collected when I was a kid. Great green bush cricket. And a few sort of dragonfly species. A few damselflies, uh, dragonfly larvae. Okay, and then this last... Um, this last draw just shows uh, native beetles. So a lot of these beetles that you see, um, obviously a lot smaller than any of those tropical ones that you saw in the first part of this video. Um, but some of them are pretty impressive still. Stag beetle, 
that's um, particular male stag beetle, the big one there. You can see a sort of an average size one here. That was the biggest male that I ever found when I was a kid, and uh, it's I think it's probably only one or two millimeters off the world record. It's a big, big boy. Then we got some of these beetles. So when you look at some of these beetles, can you see how metallic they are? They're tiny, but they're just as pretty as a lot of the uh, native beetles, just a lot smaller. Ladybirds, various other um, beetles, carnivorous beetles, tiger beetles, and then there's a lot that are um, ones that feed on carrion and that sort of thing. Chafers, longhorns, tanner beetles, and shield bugs. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a rough idea of my um, collection. Um, make sure you check out the first video if you haven't already. Eh? And if you like things like this, uh, check out my other videos and hit subscribe to see similar stuff that I post up in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.